Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the table. So I'm going to go out and say it that I'm a pretty big Kershaw fan. I own quite a few of their knives of their U.S. made models, at least. And a Kershaw is one of the first knives that got me into knife collecting. So this right here is my first pocket knife that I bought back in around, I want to say around 2009. And of course, this is the Kershaw Blur. And so this one right here was the first of many. And so you might say that I kind of like the Kershaw Blur. You know, I picked up several of them over the years. You know, just slightly different varieties and variants of the knife. And it's just a very easy to carry knife. It's a good size. It's not super heavy. It's slim. It just works. And so this Ken Onion design, this is, again, one of my favorite models. I throw the Kershaw Blur into so many of my knife videos uh, for comparison's sake because it is a very popular U.S.-made folder. And uh, Kershaw still has this knife in production to this day. So many variants of this knife out there. And so I saw when I was browsing on, of all places, on Etsy, um, I was looking for custom pocket clips because that's actually a pretty good site if you are looking for one, a custom deep carry clip for any variety of knife models. Uh, something caught my eye. <laughs> and so I visited a seller called uh, Mike's Damascus. And I noticed on his store, he was selling Kershaw Blurs that he had custom rebladed. So what we have right here is your standard Kershaw Blur handle. But what he did is he replaced the original blade on the knife with a custom Damascus blade. And so this kind of jumped out to me because, of course, you know, there are Ker Damascus Kershaws out there. Um, and Kershaw makes blades with drop point, with tanto blades. But what I've never seen before is a Kershaw blur with a sheep's foot blade or Warncliffe blade, whatever, whatever you want to call it. And so this one right here was made with this sheep's foot blade with a nice flat edge. And we can see the Damascus pattern. So the blades themselves are handmade, you know, by this maker. And so I imagine all of them are going to be very, you know, different patterns from each other. And just browsing through his sold section, through his current listings, you can see um, what he has up for offer. So he has rebladed these Kershaw blurs. Um, and as of speaking right now, there are some drop points for sale on there. There are some Tanto Damascus blurs on sale there. And uh, this one right here is the Sheep's Foot model that I purchased. I will say he also was reblading a couple of other knives. I want to say there was a Spyderco Resilience on there as well, and, and a, few, a few other models that I didn't really recognize. But taking a look at the craftsmanship of this custom reblade, you know, it's pretty impressive, to be perfectly honest. And so we had the standard Kershaw pocket clip. This one happens just to be one of the olive green handled models, um, but there are black handled models he reblades as well. You'll notice there's a thumb stud. Uh, it's a single thumb stud right there, and it has some knurling on it. But what's also really cool is that in reblading the knife, he kept the speed safe action. So if you're a fan of that, you don't have to give it up for this custom blade. So I think that's kind of cool. And I will comment, of course, because at least one of my blurs here, this is de-assisted because generally you can de-assist blurs without too much difficulty. And they work really well either way. But, um, you know, the other blurs I have here, I kept the assist on. Nothing wrong with it on this model, in my opinion especially for your use case. So I'm kind of glad that he made it compatible with the speed safe mechanism. So this right here, the reblade, we can see in the handle, <clears throat> we can see how long the blade goes into. It's essentially as long as the stock blade. And you can see the centering is essentially perfect. Really nice. And I love that we can see those, those, uh, those Damascus lines in there. Those weld lines, kind of cool. And so this per, this blend of Damascus is 1095 and uh, 15 and 20 steel. So this is a carbon steel blade. And so, of course, if you don't take care of it, it will rust uh, more readily than any of the stainless blades that Kershaw usually uses in their blur line or in their general U.S. lineup. And now... Currently, Kershaw does offer Damascus blades for any number of their U.S. knives, um, but they're always hit or miss whether they're available whenever you're looking for one. So it's kind of cool to see some just readily available from a custom maker online. So really happy that I found this one from him. Um, the blade did come nice and sharp 
out of the package. And I love that it's just the flat blade profile. It's going to make it sharpening it very easy. So very cool. Um, and you can, of course, see a size comparison between just the standard blur and the Damascus model right here. So we have a Tanto blur. Let's put those together. And then this is just your standard uh, drop point blur. So take a look at the three of them together and you can see again the overall length is really unchanged. This is by all means essentially a stock Kershaw blur. The blade is to very similar dimensions as the stock blades are. And of course they're done on purpose so that it will fit in the handle with no difficulty. And so one of the reasons why I like the blur ecosystem so much, you know, it uses the same pocket clip as the Kershaw leak. And it has a pretty wide aftermarket for deep carry options like this one does right here. And so again, if you're looking for a place to buy clips like this, Etsy itself, a lot of knife makers and makers in general do actually use that site. It may not, may not be the first place you think of when you think of knife parts, but it is a really valid option if you're just browsing around. There's a lot of EDC stuff, a lot of nice stuff on that site. You know, it's a very good place to browse around if you're curious about what makers are, are into currently. And so this one right here, I just love the look of it. Everything is, of course, very functional. There's no play in the blade. We can check out the lockup. Lockup is secure. And I know it's hard to see with that dark blade, but you can see the lockup is fully seated on the blade and it's not super late or anything. So he took care to make it good lockup. And I think that's pretty cool just to be able to reblade a knife, uh, make it fit the original geometry of your lock. And um, now when I purchased this one, he was out of stock of these sheep's foot blades. So I actually messaged him and asked, you know, when the next time he would get one in and if he was able to, to include it on a green handle. Just because as you can see, I already have three <laughs> black handled blurs and the blur itself does come in a variety of colors depending on when and where you purchase it it just so happens these three models are all the black handled variants this one here being the gateway drug this one i bought again like i said back in 2008 or 2009 2010 era um, this one is actually a blem purchased from kershaw guy and uh, there's no markings as a blem, but it was sold to me as a blem, so there was no box or anything. And just over the years, it's gotten a lot of use and wear and tear. Um, this is the one I chose to de-assist when I was toying around with that idea, and it works perfectly well as a manual opener. This one right here, <laughs> this is a 420HC Kershaw blur. Um, this was a limited run that was made for, of all places, believe it or not, Amazon. So Kershaw made a run of several thousand blurs with the 420HC steel, very low end steel compared to what they usually use, but that made Amazon be able to sell these knives for a super low price. And even though it was widely available on Amazon for, for a short time, um, those knives sold through and they have not been produced in 420HC since. So even though these knives were readily available, they are now kind of hard to find. Um, because imagine the people who bought these knives on Amazon used and abused them, and there are very few in good condition still out there. So the 420HC blur is kind of a kind of a rarity nowadays. Whereas this one right here is a Tanto blur. Um, this one I was able to pick up just for a very low price. There was some edge damage when I first got it, and you can still see a little bit near the tip of the Tanto right here. Um, it is sharp. I was able to sharpen it, get a good edge on it. It's just cosmetically, you know, damaged a little bit. But other than that, really nice blade shape um, led me to experiment with the Tanto tip on the blur. And I've given away several of these knives as gifts over the years as well, because I'm just so impressed with the model in general. And of course, very happy to bring a custom blade um, into the collection with the Kershaw Blur by Mike's Damascus on Etsy. I will drop a link in the comments below. So if you have any questions about this particular variant of the Blur or just this knife in general, I mean, it's popular for a reason. This is a classic Kershaw design with a different twist on it from a custom maker. So hope you all have a knife day, everybody. Thanks for watching. See ya.